All right, we are back from closed session, and at this point we'll have our clerk read out the actions taken in closed session. Trustee Melchicker. Yes, thank you so much. Um, on a 7 to 0 vote, um, the board approved a one month extension of a previously board approved unpaid leave granted in June 2012 with benefits for a classified employee. And the second item, on a 4 to 0 vote with trustees J. Lang and Wright abstaining, the board acted to reject a claim from a classified manager. That's, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And please rise for our invocation to be led by Trustee Bill J. Dear Heavenly Father, a new semester started last week on Monday, August 13, 2012. We're so thankful for the spacious campuses and the outstanding faculty and staff that you provided to to serve the 43,000 students that attend classes at our campuses. Thank you also for the 36 new faculty that have been added this year to augment our excellent staff. Thank you for the opportunity these new educators bring to their eager students. We ask that a careful watch be provided to our students so that they meet their academic and lifetime goals. We thank the community and the taxpayers of uh, uh, South Orange County for providing the resources to supply uh, and support our student needs. As always, thank you for the great gentle support uh, and spirit that pervades this district. Lastly, may we have a special blessing upon this meeting so that we make wise and beneficial decisions that move our students forward. Amen. Thank you. And please join with Trustee Pendergast in leading us in the pledge. Please place the flag repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and we are now at uh, resolutions. Although the agenda says none, we actually have one from President Todd Burnett. Commendation, sorry, not a resolution. Okay. Actually, Madam President and Board of Trustees, it gives me great pleasure to introduce another member of our college leadership team, and this is our new director of the Transfer Center. I'm sorry, I called you a director. You've actually served like a director. It's a coordinator of our transfer center and very thrilled to introduce Orlantha Nin. Orlantha has uh, served nine years as a counselor with Saddleback College uh, in the transfer center, EOPS, and the general counseling as well. So we just wanted you to see her face, especially on something that's, of course, enormously important for our student success and our completions, of course, our transfers. So okay. Orlantha Nin. Welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. We are now at public comments. Do we have anyone asking to speak? Okay, we do not. So we will now move to board reports. We'll start with Trustee Jay. Uh, no board report, Madam President. Thank you. Trustee Meldell. Yes, I had the opportunity to stop by the newly refurbished Student Health Center um, today here at Saddleback. And as uh, some of you know, I've been very concerned over the past uh, couple years about the amount of violence that goes on in this country and especially the amount of violence that is occurring in our schools, uh, both elementary and secondary and our universities and colleges. Uh, I'm extremely happy to see that the refurbished health center is handling approximately 100 people per day for physical and mental health needs. We have counseling available, we have all kinds of physical medicine treatment available for a basic rate of about $18 a month, and that's fantastic for our, for our students and for our, the people that come here and um, partake of our services. Uh, so I'd like to congratulate uh, Dr. Burnett about the newly refurbished health center and uh, encourage that we all make an effort to 
have our students know about the unit, the student health center and the services that they have. It's a very important um, and positive thing that we do for this community and especially for our students. So once again, congratulations. It's wonderful. And uh, one plug I would like to make is that there is not currently a psychiatrist included on the staff there, and I hope that in the next few years that we push to get a psychiatrist on staff to help with the mental health um, medications. Okay. Thank you. All right. Trustee Milchicker. Thank you. That sounds like a good idea. I saw Trustee Mel Meldow at the um, Health Center open house, and um, not only was it really fascinating, but I learned that on September 17th we're offering free um, flu shots for all of our staff and all of our um, all the staff, including all the trustees that are at the district. So uh, make your appointments or just stop in and get them. And this is, preventive medication is so important to make sure people can continue working and our students have teachers and classified employees in it that are taking care of them. So I, I'm 100 percent in favor of this also. Um, I attended um, most of the in-service uh, presentations uh, during Flex in-service week, which is always one week prior to classes starting. So that means um, I attended uh, all the classes, all the, all the meetings that were held on Monday all day long at Irvine Valley College, starting with President Glenn Rockmore's uh, presentation and going into uh, all the vice president's presentation and Davies presentation on the fiscal fiscal situation of the colleges. Uh, then on Tuesday, I attended the district services presentation, including the Chancellor Gary Portner's presentation and uh, including the faculty association's luncheon. And on Wednesday, I, I attended all of the um, Irvine. I attended all the Saddleback College presentations, including uh, President Todd Burnett's presentation and presentations all day from. Uh, eight to five, and they were fabulous. And one thing I kept bumping, in, bumping into were these very young, very brilliant looking, very intelligent looking young people everywhere, and I didn't know who they were. So I called David Bouguet and I said, who are these people? And he said, these are our new faculty members. And it was delightful. We actually have 35 new faculty members in our district this year, and they all attended the in-service. And um, the head of our academic senate, um, was here and actually put on, the, both of our academic senate presidents put on presentations for all the new faculty members that, that were wonderful. And I thank them for doing that. Uh, there, there actually are 27 new faculty members at Saddleback College and eight at Irvine Valley College. There's eight new administrators at Saddleback, eight at IBC, and one at the district. So we really welcome all these new people and are looking forward to a whole new era of, of uh, really um, new excitement and new uh, energy and uh, n new challenges for them and new, um, new n wonderful new staff for our students, and that's the most important thing of all. Thank you. Trustee Pendergast. Yeah, um, I didn't get to go to all the, the Flex Week activities. I did attend uh, the Welcome Back Breakfast on Monday morning uh, prior to attending the uh, Student Study uh, Success Task Force presentation by David Morris. Um, that morning, uh, kind of tied right into that. Uh, apparently, it, it, it was a very similar presentation to the one I missed at the, the previous board meeting, so I'm glad I got caught up on that and maybe even got a little information that some of you didn't because it was a little more up to date, but it was, it was um, very informative. And I uh, want to thank everyone for the opportunity to see that. The Chancellor's opening session, I was very excited to see the articulation that's going on between UCI our district and the Irvine Unified and Tustin Unified School District's uh, English departments um, to improve writing uh, skills for students coming in to the college level. Um, I know we're working on that at the school I teach at, so that, that it was really nice to get some recognition for that. And then the um, student health services tour today was, was very nice. Thank you. Yes, I was able to attend the Chancellor's opening session, and I found uh, the presentation just fascinating uh, of UCI and um, Irvine Valley College coordinating the needs between the two, and for our students in particular, as well as the high schools. So that's, that's great. I think that's what student success is all about. Um, I also attended the faculty um, uh, the Union uh, Faculty Association luncheon and uh, couldn't get to any of the other um, in services, but it's a great week and a great time. I want to welcome all the new faculty and um, you will, I'm sure, get to love this district like all of us do. Okay.
Trustee Wright. I was. Uh, I had a busy month in August. Uh, in fact, uh, sometimes I felt like I was almost back to work again. But uh, <laughs> uh, on August the first, I had the chance to uh, do a TV interview on Channel Six in Laguna Woods, and that was a wonderful experience. Uh, on Monday, August the sixth, I actually made a trip over to IVC, and I spent some time there. Uh, President Ben Rockmore had a birthday, so I was able to wish him happy birthday. And then that Friday, uh, President Rockmore was gracious enough to give me about a three-hour tour of IVC, so I was able to spend some time there and get acquainted with a number of people at IVC. In service uh, week was August the 13th through uh, August the 17th, and uh, I attended a number of sessions uh, at IVC at Saddleback College, uh, the Chancellor's opening session, which I thought was very well done. Uh, I thought that our, our Chancellor... Uh, did a wonderful job. Uh, Thursday, uh, I thought was interesting. We we had a uh, I kept running into Marsha wherever I went, but I uh, <laughs> I attended the uh, the state of the automotive technology. It was a, a, a wonderful presentation on what's happening in, in automobile technology, and I thought that was a wonderful uh, experience. And then on Friday, uh, again a trip to IVC and also to Saddleback to attend the classified. Uh, breakfast and then luncheon here at uh, Saddleback College. And then also on my own, I, I, I went over to the library and the LRC, and uh, that building looks wonderful. Uh, it, it's, it just looks, it's been remodeled, and it looks very, very good. Well, it, was, it looks very wonderful. There were a lot of boxes and so forth on that Friday, but uh, I was able to get a tour. Uh, 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 actually, Kevin O'Connor gave me a quick tour of the third floor and also the second floor. And then finally, uh, on Tuesday, uh, August the 21st, I had a tour of, the, of uh, several offices and district services, and I wanted to thank them for their gracious uh, hospitality, uh, Randy Peoples, Deborah Fitzsimmons, and Bob Bermucci. I, I enjoyed that afternoon I spent with district services, and I want to thank them. They're a, they're a wonderful group, and uh, we've got a wonderful district, uh, a very talented district. So thank you. Thank you. Trustee Lang. Yes, unfortunately, I was uh, out of town in Florida visiting with family for most of uh, in-service week, but uh, did manage to get back in town to uh, attend the uh, classified uh, lunch and uh, thank uh, President Burnett for inviting me there where I ran into uh, Trustee Wright. Um, in addition, I also attended the uh, health services uh, tour uh, before this meeting today, and that is a very impressive facility, and congratulations. Uh, on um, you know doing such a fine job with that, I'm looking forward uh, myself to getting over to the new uh, Learning Resources uh, Center and uh, touring that uh, building um, um, because I've heard uh, obviously wonderful things about it and uh, am anxious to uh, uh, to see the fruits of all our labor there. Uh, I also would like to extend greetings to all of the new faculty members and uh, thank all of our existing uh, faculty. Uh, for all of their hard work in serving on uh, the hiring committees uh, during those folks in, on board. And uh, welcome to everybody on a brand new uh, semester and school year. Thank you. Trustee Park. Um, I attended the trustee workshop in Burlingame where I was able to meet Scott Way, the president of the Community College League of California. Um, he went over some of the state issues and really advocated for Prop 30. Um, and we also learned about the role of a trustee and our responsibilities. Um, I was also able to attend the Chancellor's opening ses session. And as a student, I can say that it was enlightening to see how much progress we've got and how far we've gotten with UCI and their English program. Um, and I was also able to attend um, ASIVC's student or IVC student government meeting where we had a guest speaker and we learned about proper parliamentary procedures. Okay, thank you. We are now at board requests for reports. Do I have any board members requesting reports? Okay, seeing none, we will move to our discussion item. Irvine Valley College and Saddleback College, the role of the Academic Senate in Education Program Development. And President, are we going to hear from the Chancellor? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the Chancellor. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. All right, the Chancellor's report. <laughs> I just blew right by you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
I can no think report. of a smart aleck remark. But I, <laughs> with the cameras rolling, I think it's very really nice. Okay. Uh, um, the comment I'd like to make is uh, how much uh, I appreciate seeing the effort that's now going on district-wide to really get behind uh, various strategies to improve student completions. The, um, we have faculty today who are going to talk about the role of the Academic Senate as it relates to the uh, college completion agenda. Um, and for the next eight months after this, so just the whole uh, academic year, we're going to be hearing from other faculty talking about what they're doing uh, in regard to the various recommendations of the task force and how uh, that's going to help our, our student completion. Um, and in addition to that, I was very uh, thankful to see that the presidents included uh, major discussions in their opening sessions having to do with the, com the completion agenda. And, uh, and the faculty and their flex schedule uh, the same way. The, the flex schedules were full of, of uh, sessions uh, about the um, Student Success Task Force and, and what we can do. So I think we're beginning to go uh, forward. And I think that, uh, as we've said before lately, we should be a leader in the state in this area. And I'm looking forward to uh, us doing that. And we need uh, these faculty members like Bob and Kathy over here today to get behind this and provide leadership in the area of, of curriculum so that we can uh, move our students forward. Thank you. All right. Now we'll hear from our uh, two illustrious faculty members um, how they're going to help us do that. I'm going to hire some consultants. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Bob Cosgrove, Academic Center President of Saddleback. And I'm Kathy Schmeidler, President of the IVC Academic Center. We're not going to read all this. We're just going to highlight a few things. As pointed out by the Chancellor, we have eight more sessions, and this will be made more clear to you what each of the two colleges is providing by way of student success and the way we interpret it. Development of education programs is how we do student success. And in order to do that, we need to look back at the Academic Senate, the roles and responsibilities as outlined and defined in Title V and in board policies. You have in front of you uh, the board policies that were adopted uh, some years ago. Uh, and also a little card with Title V and the 10 plus 1. Uh, we'll, we'll be focusing primarily on uh, three things, curriculum, uh, program development, and the issue of student preparedness and success as we go along. The delegation of authority to the academic senates define academic and professional matters and we often refer to these as the 10 plus 1. And we won't read all of these to you, but what does it mean, the 10 plus 1? This is 10 plus 1 is what the state has uh, designated that the faculty are required to do, and we are the only ones that can develop curriculum, which is at the heart and core of any college or university. Um, and as we develop curriculum uh, using some of the matrix that are going to be approved uh, by the, uh, at the task force recommendations as they're approved by the legislature. Uh, we've already been doing a lot of this, uh, but now it's more focused and both colleges, uh, both college faculties are working together to make certain that our students do succeed. We have, you know, 2,700 students between the two colleges. I particularly like the plus one. I just want to point it out to you. <laughs> I'm not sure why we don't call them 11, but this is our plus one. <laughs> but today, we're not focusing on, in, on those. We're focusing on what's usually in the list as number four and five, educational program development and standards and policies regarding student preparation and success. And we'd like to talk a little bit today about what faculty members do besides the teaching. Of course, we do our teaching, but what else do we do? We have uh, many faculty, both part-time and full-time, that serve on various committees. 
As I mentioned, curriculum is at the core of what we essentially do in order to give students the opportunities to transfer and to gain skills in areas related to workforce uh, achievements. Uh, we do program development and revision. And that's one of the things we want to emphasize. It isn't just done once. We go back to it and revisit it, like you reviewing your board policies and administrative regulations, occasionally coming back to them to make certain they're up to date and to deal with issues that have come up since they were last addressed. We also work, of course, on student learning outcomes, and we do a variety of other things that promote student success that don't usually get counted in with curriculum, but in fact do promote and encourage student success. And I've listed a f we've listed a few of these here, for example, clubs for students, faculty members continuing to do um, professional development and hone their own skills, stay up with their discipline, confer with colleagues statewide and nationwide, as well as, of course, take part in college and district um, various things, councils and committees and so forth, and occasionally even talk among ourselves. <laughs> We're talking about a new faculty club on both campuses. Uh, Full-time and part-time faculty often go beyond their contractual obligations. And part-time faculty, of course, have far fewer obligations simply because of the nature of their uh, business at the colleges. Um, one of the things you have before you tonight is something that will further, we hope, the student uh, success package. And that is a revision of Board Policy 6160 final examinations. Since we have 2,700 students between the two campuses, it is a problem of coordination with especially our part-time faculty, trying to make certain there isn't a conflict between the two colleges. And we're urging uh, that you approve this, since both college, uh, college senates have uh, endorsed it. And that the uh, folks in IT who have to do help develop part of this, this is not a one-time shot. We don't expect to be fixed immediately. But we need to identify these students so that they can be contacted. And we can then arrange with the faculty members uh, at exam time to address the issue of when they can take their exam if there's a conflict. And there have been conflicts in the past. Um, our part-time faculty member, like our full-time faculty members, do a great deal of work for which they're not specifically compensated. And again, this is just, I'm not going to read all of this to you, but this is to highlight some of the kinds of things that we find our fac part-time faculty doing as well. So student success is why we are here, and uh, that's what we do as faculty members, uh, provide uh, uh, labs and classes and counseling and libraries and resources that will address the needs as they further their own interests and make uh, plans to transfer or go into the workforce. However, there had to be a, a but, didn't there? Um, there's insufficient time for us to do all of the things we want and insufficient funding sometimes to do many of the tasks that we're asked to complete. So what's our to-do list? We do a lot of writing, a lot of accreditation writing especially. <laughs> Seems to be one of our pastimes here. <laughs> but we also do state curriculum and program documentation. We've been very involved in student basic skills initiatives. Distance education is quite clearly coming along. We have, I think we're fourth or fifth in the state with the number of courses that we offer online. Um, and that is done uh, b at both campuses with, I think, considerable success. Uh, we devise and offer courses and programs for transfer and other certificates of completion. And in order to do these things, we need more time to counsel students, for example, to track our students. Tracking students is becoming increasingly important, not only tracking our students while they are here, but also trying to keep track of where they go afterwards, how successful were they, how do we measure whether we were successful. It's not just whether students complete a program, get a certificate, get a piece of paper, but did that certificate or that program or the education that we gave them, did that actually help them as they went along in their lives? And so it's going to become increasingly important that we can track and assess what our students have done after they've left here. 
So we need technology to, again, uh, attract students' cohorts, uh, to improve student support services. Uh, tutoring is certainly going to be a vital uh, part of both IVC and Saddleback's uh, addressing student needs. And the new LRC building is working out its bugs, is going to be a hub of activity uh, for primarily uh, math and science, uh, math and English, ESL and reading, but all of the other courses as well. But the basic skills courses are critical to students at, at both colleges. Also, um, enhancing professional development. At Saddleback, for example, uh, the Academic Senate provides uh, funding for projects and conferences, uh, presentations that teachers will make at their professional uh, arenas. Uh, we provide $500 for part-time faculty and $1,000 for full-time faculty. Um, I will read this one. Teachers are expected to reach the unattainable goals with inadequate tools. The miracle is that at times <clears throat> they accomplish the impossible task. So. On behalf of your faculty, we want to thank you for your attention, and we hope that uh, you will be actively involved in these next eight boards uh, discussions regarding uh, the basic or the skill, uh, student success initiative. Also, want to cite, uh, uh, pick up on a, a statement that uh, uh, Trustee Pendergast mentioned uh, about uh, David Morse. There is a link online now that Mark has been so kind to put up. We videotaped several sessions at IVC, and this is one that I hope all of you will have an opportunity to to watch at your leisure. not going to have to watch the full hour today. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. I don't think I've ever been on your campus before. A beautiful place. I'm really happy to be able to be here. So just one That's David Morris. fairly quickly on this. Bob suggested that it might be and helpful. And again, to reiterate, this is already online. With a group of different Are you people. Turn that They'll off. have different levels Stop. of yeah. knowledge of exactly how this whole thing came together. This is online so that you can look at it at your leisure. And, of course, he already said the most important thing. He's happy to be here, and it's a beautiful place. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, tr Trustee Melchecker, did you have a comment? Y yeah. Um, I just wondered where the link is, because yeah, when David Morris exactly uh, presented, it. I was at the other college that morning, and I couldn't, couldn't attend both at the same time. Okay, thanks. Okay. And I also wanted to mention, and I meant to mention it during my report, and I didn't, but, but that many of the presentations you can find online. You can find the Chancellor's opening um, opening session online. It's actually on YouTube. You can Google his name, and you'll find it uh, on YouTube. Um, you, you didn't know you were on YouTube, did you, <laughs> Chancellor Portner? So, <laughs> and the whole the whole presentation and, and David's presentation about. Uh, uh, the budget at Irvine Valley College and many of the presentations you can find online. So if any of the board members missed them and would like to, to, to see them, this is a really good way to see them or any of our public. Thank you. And also I, I attended Bob Cosgrove, had these wonderful sessions for the new faculty that just explained everything to the new faculty class and it was they were really wonderful. I enjoyed those also. Thank you. All right. Now we are going to, prior to going into the close, or to, I'm sorry, going into the consent calendar, we're going to advance 7.4, which is a report on the retiree trust fund. We have a guest here tonight who would like to um, address that item. So 7.4, I believe that will be Vice Chancellor uh, Business Services. Is yes. Um, you'll see if you turn to item 7.4, which is your normal monthly report that you get on the retiree <coughs> OPEB trust fund. What we have included this month was actually a yearly report as well. So on Exhibit A, you have the annual report, and Exhibit B is the monthly. And um, we've asked Carrie Ellison, our consultant, uh, to um, review the trust fund and go over the performance since its inception. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, trustees. My name is Carrie Ellison with Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to serve your district in the area of investing your uh, GASB uh, trust assets. And uh, good news 
Friday's balance was about a million more than the balance on your report, so uh, that's, good. that's always good to report. Uh, Deborah asked me to summarize a little over four years uh, worth of investment performance in about five minutes. <laughs> but thankfully, not much has really happened in the investment market in the last four years. That's my attempt at comedy here. Um, just about everything has happened uh, over yeah. the last four years. Uh, we, we started working in summer of 08, and since then we've had the collapse of the housing market, the near collapse of the financial system, a few things going on in Europe, a few things going on in Washington, D.C., uh, but despite it all, um, your, your funds have performed um, almost 5% a year since inception, below our target, but given, um, given the uh, uncertainties and the events of the past four years, we're quite pleased. Over the last three years, we've recovered quite a bit, up about 10% per year each of the last three years. And so far this calendar year, actually, through Friday's close, we're actually up 7.5%, which may seem kind of strange given all the gloomy news we've been hearing in the reports um, uh, recently. Uh, as far as our outlook uh, going forward, there are certainly a lot of uncertainties facing us. Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on in Europe. Uh, six months ago, reported to the board, we felt reasonably certain that Greece would stay with the European Union. We're not sure about that now. Uh, we do think uh, we do think Europe will muddle their way through uh, these problems. That's a technical economic term there, but we think it's going to take many years. Um, we've got a lot of uncertainties in Washington right now that really aren't going to be um, uh, handled until probably after the election, first part of next year. Uh, but despite that, um, corporate America is actually relatively healthy and, and fairly profitable. Um, we're taking a pretty measured, balanced approach in your portfolio. You'll notice on the report we've actually got slightly more than half your assets in bonds, 52% uh, uh, in bonds and 48% in stocks. Um, while our outlook for – while we believe that stocks are actually uh, relatively inexpensive on a historical basis – and extremely inexpensive relative to bonds, which are quite expensive because bond interest rates are so low and bonds are expensive. But despite that, we're not making any bets of uh, moving your allocation uh, one way or the other. We're trying to keep a balanced approach given all the uncertainties that are going on in the world right now. Uh, one final comment, um, we're not too worried about rising interest rates just because the economic forecast is rather tepid here in the United States and abroad. So with that, in, in summary, uh, we've been through uh, quite a bit over the last four years, but we've averaged almost 5% return per year. We're, we're getting back up to our, uh, our bogeys, and we appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to work with you. Any questions at all? Uh, Trustee Melchinger, is that? No, that's from previous. But I, but I could have a question. We, okay. The board really has to take a, a hands-off approach to all these Invested funds, isn't that accurate? Just asking that. Is that accurate? Well, the, the way it's structured is uh, you've appointed a retirement board of authority that then directs your uh, discretionary trustee, which is Benefit Trust Company. I'm the investment advisor. My firm is the investment advisor to Benefit Trust Company. So your retirement board of authority gets into some of the details, and we spend a lot of time talking about risk, time horizon. We look at things like uh, what do you do if the market declines, how does that affect your thoughts on the market, your time frame, et cetera. And uh, based on all of that, um, the discretionary, uh, this discretionary trustee invests your portfolio according to the guidelines given them by the Retirement Board of Authority. Um, of course, you probably have input into the Retirement Board of Authority, but you've, you've set up that board and you set up the structure to shield as much of the fiduciary uh, responsibility away from away from the district, and, and most of that responsibility is on the discretionary trustee themselves. All right, thank you very much. We you appreciate bet. your presentation, and it sounds like you're doing a pretty good job. Thank you. All right. We are now at the consent calendar, and item number 9.1 is to be advanced into the consent calendar. So. We will vote on that item with the consent calendar. It has to do with Trustee, Mil or Trustee Prendergast um, not being at a board meeting but appearing by telephone for part of it. So 
I don't know if he wants to abstain from that. We need to pull it off of the consent calendar. We'll vote on it separately, but it will be considered a consent calendar item. Do we have any other items needing to be pulled from the consent calendar? Okay, could we hear those? Trustee Lang. Uh, yes, I'd like to pull 5.2, please. Okay, 5.2. 9.1 well, is going to be pulled. Yes, next. Would you push your button if you want to speak, Ms. Trustee Milkchecker? Did you want to speak? No. Okay. I'll pull item 5.4. Okay, 5.4, 9.1, 5.2, anyone else? Okay, so let's vote on the balance of the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to approve the balance of the, and a second by Trustee Che, or Trustee, uh, yeah, Che. All right, let's vote. Okay, matter carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. All right, we will now vote on item 5.2, which was pulled by Trustee Lang. Yes, I had pulled that item because I found the, um, I guess, operational pro forma information to be somewhat lacking in that I was looking to get actual results from the driving range operations and uh, I think that's been furnished to us now yes. um, by our uh, Vice Chancellor of Fiscal Services. So everybody has that. I think it's uh, um, uh, the other thing that struck me about this item was until I had a chance to talk to um, Vice Chancellor Fitzsimmons, uh, uh, why we were, or the reasoning behind why we were re restructuring the, um, the contract. And that became very apparent once you started to look at the financial information. Uh, the driving uh, range is not being utilized as uh, much as it used to be. Uh, the revenues that we are deriving from that operation are much less than they used to be, and uh, therefore it was appropriate um, uh, essentially to cut back on the management fee, as I understand it, um, in order for that to be a more equitable arrangement for both parties. And I don't know if there was anything else that uh, you wanted to, to say about that uh, Yes, the information that we supplied you tonight to add to your packet um, clearly showed, and I, want, I wanted to mention that um, Vice President Hilton did provide this overview, and the additional amount with the new contract, if we would have had the terms as is in this amendment for the last four years, would have supplied $90,000 extra back to the campuses, to the college, I should say. And so um, it is to the benefit of the college to have this amendment in place. Okay. And so with that in mind, I'll, I'll move right. to uh, approve the side. All right. I'll second. Seconded by Tracy Pendergast. So um, any other comments? Or All right. Let's vote on the item. Trustee Mallet. All right. Carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. So we are now at item 5.5, .5, I believe, is 4. 5.4, pull by Trustee Milchaker. Yes. Yeah, I, I pulled 5.5. Four because it's about our uh, wonderful new health science building that Kathy Schmeidler is, life science building, I'm sorry, excuse me, that, that Kathy Schmeidler is so very, very excited about, uh, and all of us are excited about being a former biology teacher at Irvine Valley College, myself, being a former biology teacher myself, and, and a professor of biology also, but enough talk about me. Uh, I, I was concerned about it because there was over a um, million dollars in, in, in costs that weren't initially budgeted for this building, and I was concerned about the cost of the building. And I went to uh, Brandy Delina earlier today and, and met with her, and she explained to me exactly what's happening with the building. And, and uh, it, it's really, I don't know if you want to explain it more, but it's certainly no, nobody's fault. It's, it's, uh, there was a problem with the contractor, and it's been extended, and they're taking care of it. They have, they have a company called Assurity Company who insures the building if the contractor goes out of business, and the contractor unfortunately went out of business. It, it was a, a good contractor, but that happened, and now they're going to get another contractor, and the building will be finished, and it's going to have a very happy ending. But this is what they've had to deal with, and they've really worked hard to hold the whole thing together and um, to get us our wonderful life science building that we're all waiting for <laughs> so, so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Penrius. 
I just was saying, is it possible that you could share it with the rest of us what's going on? <laughs> Delina, you want to come up and <laughs> it's great uh, that take you a know a lot, but <laughs> it'd be nice if the rest of us could find out the same information. If I could just interject, we have two different um, um, issues. One is the con uh, the item before us is an amendment to the architectural services contract, which is for three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars, and that's a change to add to the services to the contract to modify the plumbing design for potable um, potable toilets. Now, the issue with the um, construction management, I'd like to ask Brandy to go over and explain to her exactly what the situation is as of today. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about this building. We are in a transitional time on this building right now. It has been taken over by the surety since December. When the contractor first started having problems, they indicated a desire to continue moving forward with the project with the hope that a, a parent company would buy their firm and allow for them to proceed forward. That didn't take place. Um, more things fell apart. We lost a project manager about two weeks ago, and the surety made a determination that it would be in our best interest to shut this project down while we're awaiting a new contractor to be assigned. The surety is responsible for selecting that contractor. We have the opportunity to reject those that we feel are inadequate, and we did so in two cases of six that were provided to us on the list. So there are four contractors out there right now that are going to be providing proposals, have provided proposals as of the 20th to the surety. They're expecting to enter into an agreement with one of those firms over the next week or so. In um, parallel with that, we're working with the surety to negotiate a takeover agreement. That takeover agreement involves negotiations on the costs that we incurred. Last month you saw a number of costs that were um, extended for services such as the architect, the geotechnical engineer, the um, DSA inspector, the labor compliance officers, all of those people's services were required to extend an additional approximately 7.5 months. Um, you approved those costs last month and when we negotiate with the surety during the takeover agreement, we will um, work hard toward obtaining some but not all of those costs, re retaining some of those back. And the project is expected to begin again approximately two to three weeks. We're at about 40% completion in construction and have another 60% to go. At the 50% mark, we'll be meeting with the end users to define their furniture and equipment needs. We're pretty excited about having that move forward. Professor Pendergast, did you have something? Every, every time you go through this, I, I see that slide of the dinghy called original <laughs> contract and the boat change order. Are we entering into that? level or where are we on that? We have expended, as um, Trustee Milchiker indicated, approximately a million additional dollars on this project as a result of this delay. Um, haven't actually expended, I should say, encumbered that amount of money in those costs. Um, we're anticipating, unfortunately, about a 40 to 60 percent return on that money. We do have change orders from the previous contractors um, subcontractors that will continue to negotiate uh, with the hope that most of those can be resolved. Okay, Trustee Lang. Just a quick question. Um, is this, might we have avoided this if we had gone with the new construction method uh, to begin with on this kind of project and just looking at now having to start, stop and start over um, are, are we moving in that direction, or are we stuck with the methods that we've employed in the past? I'm so excited you asked that question. <laughs> we are moving very strongly in a direction toward um, engaging the lease lease back delivery method for the sciences building here at Saddleback. We've performed the qualifications portion of that selection process. We have three contractors who are prepared to provide us with proposals by September 6th. Three excellent contractors, by the way. And we are in the process of the design build delivery method. We have submitted recently um, the request for qualifications, provided the advertisement, had a response of 18 participants. We have a selection committee who is currently reviewing those participants' submittals and will be selecting the people who are qualified to provide us with proposals approximately around September 12th. 
And then we'll move into receiving those proposals and moving forward with design build on the A400 building over at IVC. Very, it's so exciting. <laughs> oh, yes. You got that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seeing no other trustees wishing to speak, let's vote on the item. Oh, we do have a motion? I'm sorry. Who may, who uh, moved? I'll, I'll move acceptance on this. All right, oh. and who seconds? Second. Second, thank you. All right, vote, please. Trustee Jay. All right, carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. We're now at item 9.1 added to the consent calendar, and this is to pay Trustee Pendergast for his absence. He participated by phone and part of that particular meeting. It's moved by Trustee Lang, seconded by Trustee Wright. Any comments? Let's vote on the item. Okay, uh, carries unanimously with one abstention and one student advisory yes vote. And we are now finished with the consent calendar and move to our action items, which is 6.1. And this is our student government budgets. So we're going to have first Saddleback or Irvine present. Uh, we will have um, Irvine Valley College student government coming up first, but I do want to say that on the memo itself, we have a correction. Okay. If you take a look under status, and it's in the first sentence, it says that the Saddleback College ASG budget has increased from 20000 to 345820 The 345820 is actually 243866 We had some changes to the financial sheets for Saddleback, and we did not get to have the action memo corrected accordingly. So that is the correction. 243866 Thank you. And with that, we'll have IBC student government come up. Okay. They have more money than we do. <laughs> and we do all have handouts for this. Okay, great. Uh, good evening. Good evening. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce to you Thomas Thane, our uh, ASIVC president. He's going to do the presentation of the budget this evening. Good evening, President Petbergs, members of the Board of Trustees, President Rockamore, President Bernack, Shared Governance Representative, and members of the public. It's our pleasure to bring your ESIVC final budget for academic year of 2012 and 2013. I'll just highlight a few budget changes in our budget and welcome your question and suggestion at the end. Thank you. Allow me to show you page one is the changes that we made is decrease in the beginning fund balance and miscellaneous income. And the following are the category that we have changes on, which are ASIVC sticker sales, bookstore, cafeteria, summer commissions, and ASIVC operation, contingency, and the mid-year request. And I would like to point out the changes for our ending balance on the next page. When the final expenditures and true income were, was calculated, we had a drop in our balance. One reason is that an estimate of income of 2011 to 12 for, from commission from the cafeteria bookstore did not materialize with a cutback to one summer section and fewer classes. There were some encumbered expenses such as salaries that get posted in July for June that affected the balance as well. With a new ending fund balance, the other changes were contingency, emergency funds, anticipated mid-year requests, and scholarships. We expect our ESIVC sticker sales to increase and will bring our scholarship funding back to its original figure in the spring. Any questions? Yes, Trustee Lang. Yes, two, um, one comment, one question. Um, good job, by the way. Thank you. On your presentation. Um, my comment would be that perhaps in the future you might want to consider um, making this like a three-column report where you're showing the original budget, the revised budget, to highlight what the changes are. That would be helpful just from a reader's perspective. So sure. consider that. Thank you for um, the recommendation. The one question that I have was on Exhibit B, page 12 of 12. I noticed under the category uh, at the very top, under Equipment Repairs, that there were requests apparently made of $3,000 and an allocation of $13,000, which struck me as highly unusual that you would allocate 10000 more than what was requested.
Oh, the reason is like we have to add ten thousand for the bookstore that we're repairing for. Oh, is that okay? Is that an un unanticipated um, item that was not included in the request? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Mm. Any questions? Okay. No other comments or questions. So, we'd like to have a motion for approval on this item. Oh yes, we would. I think we should vote on them separately. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I second that. Seconded motion. by Trustee Milchecker. Let's all vote on accepting the IVC um, student budget. Carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. Thank you very much. We'll now move Thank to you. Saddleback College. Juan Avalos, Vice President for Student Services. I'd like to introduce Bamin Sabahi, who is our new ASG Treasurer, who will be presenting the final ASG budget. Good evening, Board President Padberg, Board of Trustees, Chancellor Partner, and members of the audience. My name is Bamin Sabahi. I am the Saddleback ASG Treasurer for the 2012-2013 school year. I would like to take a second to recognize our current ASU advisor, Dr. Juan Avalos, for his continuous support, encouragement, and guidance. Also, this year's ASG Leadership Council, who have been incredible assets to the already outstanding success of this year's student government. It's a pleasure to be standing here and have the opportunity to present to you the ASG final budget. Now that the final numbers have been calculated, and the final revenues collected, I am able to state the final changes we have made since our ASU President Eric Bremen presented you with the ASU tentative budget at the June meeting. The tentative budget presentation was estimated based on predetermined priorities ASU had set in previous years. For the 2012-2013 final budget, we have focused on directly giving back to the student body by allocating a larger portion to student scholarships, awards, and co-curricular activities. Here are the high list of changes in numbers. The total sources of funds have increased by $109,017.20. Now if you would please bring your attention to the uses of funds. I would like to highlight the fact that we have been able to nearly double the amount allocated to co-curricular programs proudly bringing the new total to $89,469. Saddleback College is an institution that emphasizes student opportunity. With that being said, we find ourselves prioritizing student support, and as you can see, the funds for student support have increased. The funding for contingency allocation for anticipated media requests and scholarships increased significantly. The vast majority of the increase go into student scholarships and awards. As mentioned earlier, our main focus has been to give back to the student body. And in order to enhance student opportunity, the allocations to student scholarships and awards have more than doubled, with a new total of $162,035. ASU is proud to support student success. As you can see, our presentation of the final budget follows the same theme which ASU President Eric Bremen presented in June. I am honestly very proud of the Summer Budget Committee and the way they handled the, current, the ending balance allocations, ensuring that scholarships and student-oriented programs maintain highest priority. Thank you for your time and attention, and at this point I would like to take any questions you may have. Any comments? Trustee Lang. Oh. Yes, again, thank you for a fine presentation of the uh, budget. Um, just a couple of uh, questions that I had. One is, uh, obviously, I was a little stunned, I guess, by the large difference 
in the uh, beginning balance amount that came forward, uh, even though it is smaller than, the, the, than what was in the original item narrative. Um, and just wondering if we are in a situation of where we are going to continue to have very large um, carryover balances in the future, um, and whether that's, uh, um, you know, um, uh, whether that's just something that's built into the process right now, um, or uh, if in fact you do intend to spend, well, uh, I shouldn't uh, I shouldn't put it that way. Uh, the amount that you have indicated um, for contingency allocation of mid-year requests and scholarships obviously is um, you know consumes a very large part of that budget, and. Um, you know, I uh, applaud you, obviously, for wanting to uh, do so much in the area of scholarships, but um, um, I'm wondering, is that really what the intent is here? Uh, are you planning on spending back, spending down some of that beginning balance during the current year, or should we expect that this is going to, you know, this is a trend that's going to continue? Um, ASG Leadership has begun a conversation this summer and is considering lowering it for the next year, lowering it to the minimum 10%. And how, how would you go about doing that? Would you um, cut back on, um, you know, uh, uh, your charging for activity stamp sales? Or it seems like a lot, a great part of your budget is based upon minimum guaranteed revenues. So there isn't that much discretion in terms of, at least on the income side of things. If I may, Bowman's been new to our development for about two weeks. Thank so he's done wonderfully in the two weeks that he knows. Uh, the question of um, rollover has been one that I know has been of major interest. Uh, the part where it, our interest is always to make sure that all those funds get expended each year. And I know that under Audra's leadership, that's been a primary focus. The mid-year allows for some of that to be given back in one time. Uh, our goal is to continue to have that number go down. Part of the reason why you see the amount happen is a good portion of the ASG allocations goes in the forms of grants to the various areas that, that identify programs. So take a big chunk of money, 500 grand, gets divvied out throughout the entire college, and then they're looking to spend that down. Um, and sometimes for whatever reasons in those, in those areas, that doesn't get spent down. But our interest is to continually have that go down, have more of those funds be expended as designed, and uh, I think in the in the coming years, you'll see lower and lower rollover. Okay. My, my other question had to do with there were some fairly large allocations that had occurred in the prior two fiscal years that are shown um, that don't appear in, uh, in the current uh, fiscal year, uh, theater arts being one of those big areas in which there were substantial dollars uh, that appear to have been expended but no allocations made. Uh, similarly, uh, choral and vocal music uh, um, and some of the other areas in the arts. Uh, athletics was another big area mm -hmm. in which there were fairly substantial expense allocations in the prior two fiscal years, uh, but nothing indicated for the current year. Uh, by design, something that would be looked at in the mid-year um, reasoning for that. Yeah, all... All funding that has been given out in past several years, I mean, we've continued to honor that funding. Part of what you see is there been uh, this last year we went through, uh, take a look at philosophically how we've allocated the dollars. So what we've done is the portion that ASG allocates has been geared towards um, programs that are specifically related to the educational component. Uh, some of the kind of funding that you're referring to in arts and in athletics is being covered uh, from the college side. So the, the areas are whole. You're just seeing them packaged in different ways. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Trustee Milchecker. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Yours was turned yes, off. Trustee Pinergast, go ahead. All right. Um, yeah, and I just kind of want to piggyback on that because I'm looking at that same thing where you have a number of things that, we're, are now zero, um, and you made the statement that you're proud of the 89469 being spent in uh, co-curricular, but that's actually down from the previous year and, and the year before that. So you indicated there was an increase, but in fact it's a decrease, so I'm confused. Yeah, the, in the increase is relevant to the tentative budget. 
So when, oh, we, when we talked about the from, tentative budget, okay. it was increased from the original that was presented in June. And, and as Ed mentioned, the, the zeros mean zero from this sorts of funds, but the actual events have been fully whole from other sources of funds. Trustee Miltrigger, did you wish to speak? Yeah, I, I, my questions were already answered, but I thank the students for giving these excellent presentations. Thank you. Great. So seeing no other trustees wishing to speak, let's uh, have a motion. And could I hear? Moved by Trustee Lang. Second by Second Jay. Second by Trustee Prendergast. Jay. Jay. Trustee Jay, all vote, please. Okay, carries unanimously with uh, one student advisory yes vote. Thank you very much. Excellent. We are now at 6.2, which is the adoption of the final budget for the district. So we're going to have Vice Chancellor Fitzsimmons present this. Okay. Okay, we have a motion for approval without even having that <laughs> presented. <laughs> Good evening. We better hear about the item first. Okay. Okay, you have before you the district's final budget for fiscal year 2012 2013 for your review and approval. Um, my role is to ensure that I present to you budget information, both at tentative budget and at final budget, in a clear, easy to understand, and but comprehensive way so that you are informed when reviewing and approving the budget. As background, at our district, we have 80 to 90 percent of the budget built at tentative budget. And this is pretty amazing because most districts do not have all this work done by tentative budget. And this year, we were even further along. So in June, at tentative budget, you received a pretty comprehensive presentation and overview of the budget by myself and others. Therefore, tonight, we're going to, only going to review the differences between the approved tentative budget and the recommended final budget. And this presentation should be relatively brief compared to tentative budget time. As you know, the district's final budget is primarily based on information from the final state budget. And that was approved before July 1st of this year. This is an overview of the funds. Total budget for all funds is $553.3 million. And if you turn to page 10 in your budget book that's included in your packets, you can see an outline of the funds. The majority, 90% of the general fund budget equals $201 million. And that is, that is what's comprised of unrestricted general funds. The other 10%, $23 million, is the restricted funds. Other funds total $329.3 million, and these include such funds as community education, child development, capital outlay, which you're used to seeing where the basic aid projects lie, facilities corporation, self-insurance, retirement benefits, and the OPED trust. This slide shows changes to our income. At the final budget stage, which is where we are now, we know our ending balances at this point. And so this past year, we carried forward $21.1 million in unrestricted ending balance. Of that $21.1 million, we have a contingency of 7.5%, which is the board uh, contingency, of $10.3 million. And the remaining balances go to the sites. As you know, our general fund allocations to the colleges go, are distributed via the DRAC model, which simulates state funding. To be conservative, we did not allocate any growth funds to the colleges at this point in time because the fate of growth funds from the state level are tied to revenue assumptions and tax increases that may not occur at this point. There is also a revision to the income for lottery by $200,000 to the income. If you refer to your booklet on pages 12 and 13, we summarize some of the noteworthy general fund assumptions regarding expenses. In regards to salary and benefit expenses, we have already implemented one major category, the faculty association contract, in the tentative budget, which you already had presented in June. So at final budget, we implemented two other groups, the CSEA contract and the administrators and managers classification study. POA negotiations are not yet complete and therefore not implemented in this final budget. Other items to note are that benefits have increased 5.2% and PERS rate increased by 0.494% to 11.4% rate for PERS. 
even though it's not part of what we build in our budget, we did do our annual 311 report, and our 50% number is at 51.71 for last year. And that's important to note because we have since hired 36 faculty members um, uh, this past year for, that are starting this year, as well as intend to um, hire a few more beginning this year. So that number will increase, but I wanted to provide that number to you. This is a category, uh, in a, there is a category in the DRAC model that's called general expenses. And what that is is um, items that re, um, have district-wide impact. In this category, there are some items that have increased, and we focused on several areas that were the largest. Um, property and liability insurance increased by 100,000. District-wide technology maintenance agreement, that's a new item in the DRAC model under general expenses, and that's for the perceptive contract for IT, $47,150. Recruitment costs were added for first time because of the, um, the high recruitment. And this number would only be expended based on a plan that's going to be um, um, created by HR from the college's um, hiring plans and would only be expended after that plan's in place. And the, both, folks, both colleges get to look at that. Um, and in carryover one time, we implemented and allowed a one-time carryover of college IT projects because um, they weren't completed. The basic eight projects were presented to you in May and approved as part of the tenant budget. Those projects total $74.3 million and are listed on pages 18 and 19 in the budget book. We also have a two-year contingency for unrealized property taxes, although only one year is required in the basic aid, um, board policy and administrative regulation. And we have already realized those taxes for one of those years. So the contingency is extra conservative this year, and the amount is $17.6 million. Looking ahead um, for this year, we need to emphasize that it has been very challenging over the last year and will continue to be so. We've all had increased demands for programs and services, and our new income has only slightly increased. This dynamic creates challenges both for the colleges and the district services. We therefore must continue to think strategically, linking our planning to our resource decision making and work together. One item that we are reviewing is the new mandated cost block grant to determine if that method will provide a more reliable source of income for mandated cost claims and than the state current, current formula that we are currently using. And we also have to keep in mind that as we face our own challenges here in our district, that our neighboring districts are struggling more. Additional cuts are on the horizon for them as the state may remove growth funds from the budget and cuts will now be cutting to the bone for some of these districts. We continue to be very fortunate that we are a basic aid district and that we have a good strong leadership and financial stewardship from the board, the district and the college leaders who manage the resources that we do very, very well. This is the end of my overview of the final budget for the 2012-2013 fiscal year. I want to thank you for allowing me to present this budget to you this evening. I know there has been not a lot of changes to the budget since last time, so hopefully this brief presentation was appreciated. I ask that we recognize the hard work it took to develop both the tentative and final budgets. It was done by both of the campus business officers, Carol Hilton and Devi Kachachian and Kim McCord, District Director of Fiscal Services, as well as the College Presidents, DRAC, and the College Planning and Budget Committees. It was a collective effort. And at this time, I'll take questions, and, so, and they're also in the audience if you have questions for the colleges. Thank you. Trustee Pendergast. Yeah, I have several. I'm going to actually let uh, Trustee Meldow take the uh, capital outlay question that I was going to ask, because I know he wants to do that. Um, but I, uh, I have a couple questions. You, you, you mentioned that you are basing a, you're doing a conservative budget based on the the potential lack of tax increases and those. So you're you're planning, you know, worst case scenario, Proposition 30 doesn't pass, and that the the funds aren't going to be allocated in that you know based on what the governor's proposal is if it doesn't pass. What happens if it does pass? Is that going to change our budget, or is it going to be considered a bonus? As you know, our DRAC model was based on the state funding model, even though we don't get state funds. So if it were to pass, then um, the growth could be implemented in the formula, and then the DRAC model would be revised 
to accommodate the growth. We didn't want to have that budgeted in the final budget, even though it's final budget, because that's not a conservative approach. Right. And we weren't, we weren't really um, felt that that was a practical thing to do. So then uh, the other thing I, I really want to make sure I'm clear on understanding, you, you mentioned that employee benefits went up 5.2%. Is that the health benefit? It only went up 5.2% yes. from Blue health, Shield? Yeah, health benefits from tentative budget have gone up 5.2%. Yes. That's incredible. <laughs> Trustee Lang. Everyone else is going up like 20. Are you finished? Yeah. Trustee Lang. Yes, thank you. First of all, I wanted to uh, congratulate you and all of the folks that you mentioned in the development of the, this budget, which I think is um, for a very complicated budget. Uh, you've made it, I think, as clear as you possibly can to, uh, to, to our group. Um, a couple of questions that I had uh, on page... 13, you highlighted uh, those categories of general expenses that you're, um, uh, that, that you have identified as being, um, having additional costs uh, over and above uh, prior years, I guess. And uh, a couple of the ones that stood out to me were on the uh, legal and audit um, fee increases um, and the property and liability insurance number, um, I can, and somewhat the credit card service fees. I know that more people are using credit cards, so we're seeing that, frankly, in our business where credit card fees are increasing as well. And I presume that that has, uh, it's a similar situation here. Maybe you could just briefly talk about those items. Sure. If you take a look at page 13, we asterisked for the first time in this booklet. Um, in the past um, years, we've never really indicated which ones had raised during final budgets. We thought that was important to do for transparency purposes. And if you take a look at the asterisks, you can see credit card services is at $500,000. Yes, those have increased based on the amount of fees and the amount of people using credit card now versus before. So that has increased from the prior year of $100,000. Um, the second one is discrimination, harassment, investigation services. That has increased by $10,000. And we just have more cases and those costs to, be, to do those investigations through the HR office. The third one is a district-wide maintenance agreement, which I mentioned. It's the first time we're doing that. We're taking a look at all the district-wide maintenance agreements that are currently being funded in uh, district services IT budget. And what we're doing is taking a look at those, and it could be possible that we actually put them in this list and re possibly reduce the amount or percentage that goes to district services um, that comes through the DRAC model as an offset. But at least they're listed, and it's more transparent that way. Um, so that's something that we're considering, but we have to take it through DRAC, and we have a lot of work to do before we're to do that. Um, the financial audit increased $5,000, and this was an amendment we made to the contract for 5000 um, oh, okay. we did so the, the, the dollar amounts that we're seeing here are the, are the total amount, total not amounts. just the increase. Not the increase. So, yes, so the asterisk is the total amount budgeted in the general expenses. The actual net increase is 43150 out of all the categories because some did in decrease as well. Okay. Um, we, we have also an increase for legal fees, um, $50,000 for legal fees. Um, and that is because we had rate changes for two of our firms that I think you um, recently approved um, at previous board meetings. We also have, um, let's see, personal advertising has gone up, um, and that's due to the uh, increased um, advertising due to the um, faculty, primarily the faculty mm -hmm. hires. And then we have um, property and liability insurance is an interesting one. It increased by $100,000 over last year. However, last year we had a rebate that we got, which we don't have this year, and then it's also based in FTS, and FTS has increased. So it's a combination of those two factors. So we didn't get a rebate this year. Thank you. Uh, oh, the other item was what is the nature of the recruitment costs that, uh, that we're expending? Is that for doing national searches or... Right, um, it's everything from possibly overtime and, and um, whatnot in the HR office as well as the actual doing the searches. Now that will be not expended until a plan's in place that's um, dri um, driven by hires that are um, being planned at the colleges. So that's a number that could very well be much less than that. Okay. Um, 
The other question that I had was I was just curious about the projections that you showed on page 15 for basic aid receipts. And, um, you know, it's just interesting to note how this thing is sort of bouncing up and down like that. Um, and, for example, 2014-15 to 2015-16 is like a 2.1 million decrease in basic in expected basic aid receipts. Um, and I couldn't quite follow that from the uh, assumption um, explanations that, that, that were here. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question because I think that points out that we should maybe make that point in the booklet a little more clearer. Basically, the excess property taxes over and above what we allocate through the DRAC model is then the amount that is available for um, allocating for basic aid. So it's sort of um, two parts of property taxes. Um, we um, estimated those, our secure taxes, for the first year to be flat and for the other, second year to be 1% and then for the outlying years to be 2%. And then for basic aid receipts for the first year, 0% COLA and 0% growth. And then for the years two and three, one percent cool and one percent growth, and that's just an estimate at this point for the purposes of illustration. And in the last year, two percent cool and two percent growth. That those cool and growth numbers are used in the DRAC model. So as a result, if we were to have a two percent cool and two percent growth on that last year, it'd be less for basic aid. So that's why it went down. Uh, okay, thank you. That, that makes sense. Um, and then I think the final question that I had was, I know on page twenty, you. Um, have indicated what makes up the balance in the capital outlay projects fund. The last item on there, uh, which you have redevelopment funds reserved for future capital projects, um, and I think you have indicated that that is money that we've already received that is just set aside for those purposes. Um, what What has been the effect of the whole change in uh, redevelopment agencies on our on our budget. Yes, um, you have you heard a lot probably in the newspapers on redevelopment authorities and how when they got um, terminated, there's been successor agencies set up, and there's a lot of interest in what's going on with redevelopment right now, both from the city's perspective and all the school districts and the colleges that are impacted. Um, our pass-through monies, which are our primary source of redevelopment monies, are not impacted. However, we do, um, because we're basic aid, we're, we're very fortunate enough to have a little bit of excess property taxes that did come to us this past year. Um, pro probably about, what, $300,000, I believe, Kim, through a couple of our redevelopment areas. Um, that money is very unpredictable. I actually didn't expect any dollars to come from excess through, that, through the new legislation that got passed. So basically, it's very unpredictable funding the excess. Now, for all the other districts that are not basic aid districts, Basically, what happens is that excess property taxes that they re they receive is just offset by the state formula. It's just less that the state's going to give them in formula, which was the, basically the reasoning behind it from the governor. So um, yes, we do have 12 point. We have a, lo a lot of money now um, from redevelopment that's sitting there. It hasn't been spent. However, it took us probably almost 30 years to get that in place. It's not a lot of money per year. So it's a savings account right now. Um, we're just we're talking to the college presidents today, actually, and and indicating to them that we're going to be talking about um, we're discussing an allocation process because we really don't have a process for allocating those funds um, like we do for DRAC and for basic aid. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no other trustees wishing to speak, I have a motion from Trustee Jay to approve the budget. I need a second. Second. Second, Trustee, Mel Trustee Melchicker. Let's vote to approve the budget. Matter carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Great job. We're now at um, 6.3, which is board policy revisions, and there are several policies the, uh, the Chancellor is recommending the board revise. It's here for discussion and approval. So any comments or discussions about these various board policies? Okay, moved by Trustee Lang. Second. Second by Trustee Prendergast. Seeing no one wishing to speak, let's vote on the item. Okay, carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. 6.4, these are board policy revisions for acceptance for review and study. 
And um, any comments? Trustee Lang moved the motion. Second. Seconded by Trustee Jay. Let's vote on the item. Okay, matter carries unanimously. Weather Student Advisory, yes vote. Thank you very much. We're now at 6.5, Academic Personnel Actions. Okay. No changes, so let's, do I hear a motion to approve this item? Any questions? Trustee Jay? Second. Second, Trustee Melchecker. All in favor, please vote. Okay, vote, 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 vote however you wish. All right, carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. We're now at 6.6, .6, which is classified personnel actions. One change. one change. If you look at page one. Page one. Underneath A1, there's two Phillips there, Phillips Linus. Yes. The first one is to be stricken. Okay. But other than that, we'd recommend the, the approval of the rest. All right. Did everyone get that change? Mm -hmm. Okay. Trustee Lang moved it. Seconded by Trustee Wright. No one wishing to speak. Let's vote on the item. Trustee Pendergast, it didn't carry. Okay. All right. Matter carries unanimously with one student advisory yes vote. So we are now at 7.1, which are our information items and reports. This has to do with outside speakers. And any comments or questions? I see none. We'll move to 7.2. It's our basic aid report that we get monthly. You've heard about that in our budget. Did you want to make a comment? Just that this month is the one where we have the closed projects listed out on this um, particular item. We don't do that every month, but because they were approved through the budget, we wanted to have them listed out on this report. Okay, thank you. 7.3, facilities plan status report. Questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll go to 7.4. We've actually done that. This is the retiree trust fund report. So we'll go to 7.5 then, and that's the quarterly investment report. Seeing no comments, we will go to 7.6, and that's a quarterly financial status report. Seeing no comments, we'll go to 8, and that is our report from our shared governance, starting with uh, Bob Cosgrove from the Academic Senate. Thank you very much. Saddleback Academic Senate, excuse me. One of them. Right. <laughs> um, just two items. One, I left a copy of the new uh, faculty and administrative bios uh, on your dais there. I don't know if you received them before, but yeah. uh, I thought it was very nicely done and people seem to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is mentioned already, uh, the new faculty orientation, which we had four hours and a tour. And also had a little bit of a tour at IVC on Tuesday kind of crowd some of the uh, new faculty from IVC and uh, took them along on a little trip that Kathy helped uh, plan. And then uh, we have several more uh, orientation meetings with a new faculty, uh, one each month, and that will also continue then into the spring. Okay, thank you. And we have no one from the Faculty Association here tonight, and I see we lost our Urban Valley College Academic Senate. She'll be back. Oh, she'll be back, okay. <laughs> so we're now at our Associate Vice Chancellor for Economic Development. Randy Peoples. Thank you, and good evening. A uh, couple of quick uh, points on our development updates. Uh, first of all, our structural dem demolitions are all now completely down on the 68 acres, and uh, that's a very good thing. So all the <laughs> Navy and military buildings are down. We still have what we call our at-ground level demo. And that's actually in ground, the, uh, the streets, the curbs, the sidewalks still have to be demoed, and we're right now at the city doing a review and getting approval for that. And uh, I also want to uh, note that we are continuing an escrow, um, the escrow phase for the uh, exchange of property with the County of Orange, which is for 10 acres. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lastly, we're making good progress now and uh, I'll, I'll even say somewhat accelerated progress with additional meetings with the city of Tustin and making nice progress. Thank you. Very good. And our president of Irvine Valley College. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I would first of all like to thank uh, Trustee Milchiker and Trustee Wright for attending the uh, in-service uh, presentation on uh, completion agenda. Uh, appreciate that very much and also the uh, classified breakfast as well. And I will just uh, have one other thing. You should have received invitations to our uh, September 11th uh, commemoration. Uh, we're very proud that once again this year we'll have David Maggard, um, uh, Chief of Police at Irvine, 
city of Irvine, also the Orange County Fire Authority uh, Chief uh, Keith Richter, and also the Orange County Sheriff Sandra Hutchins will be there as well. So I hope you can make it out. It is actually on September 11th on Tuesday uh, at noon. So okay. Thank you very much. Great. And we're going to go back to our uh, president of the IBC Academic Senate who just came back in the room, Kathy Smidler. I apologize. Conferring with, uh, with other IBCites. Um, thank you. I'd like to... Well, first of all, our Senate met in what we call a general assembly, which is a group that doesn't meet for business, but it's part of our Flex Week activity. And we had a very good turnout, lots of faculty members in attendance. And this was just to catch up with news and so forth. I'd like to thank the board members who came to IVC for one or more events. It was wonderful to see you up there. It's always good to see you on campus. Um, and you're always welcome, of course. <clears throat> so our Flex Week activities were very, uh, I think, very interesting and had very good attendance. Uh, attendance has been increasing, and I was pleased to see how many people attended the Chancellor's opening remarks as well as, of course, our President's. Um, so that it was nice to have Saddleback people coming up for the joint event. Um, partly as the um, on the advice or on the... <clears throat> a model of my colleagues at Saddleback at the end of the faculty association lunch we invited anybody who wished especially new faculty and Saddleback people to take a small walking tour of campus and we had um, eight or ten people go on that tour Saddleback folks who had never been around the campus before and that was really again a very nice thing and um, I think it harbings, harbingers uh, it's a harbinger of better relationships between the faculty at the two colleges. Our first meeting for business will be this Thursday, so I should have a much more uh, useful kind of report for you next month. Thank you. Thank you very much. President of Saddleback College, Todd Burnett. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to congratulate and commend uh, both the uh, students' representatives from ASG, I'm sorry, student government from Saddleback College and IVC for their great presentations. Uh, also, uh, would like to thank uh, Deborah, our vice chancellor, has now been here about a year and a half or so, uh, and Kim McCord, who's new, and as well as uh, both uh, uh, David and Carol from our two colleges for doing a fantastic job this year once again on the budget. Just superb. So thank you. Um, wanted to thank the board very much. In fact, every single board member and our, everybody attended and our chancellor today for the open house for the Student Health Center. Um, and I would like to say give a lot the credit to our new director, Jeannie Harris Caldwell, who is just superb addition to our district and our college. And also to Dr. Juan Avalos, who's the vice president over student services, who was very supportive of this uh, entire renovation. So great job. Um, would all, um, also, uh, Flex Week was a big success, thank, uh, thanks to our Academic Senate. Thank you, Dr. Bob Cosgrove and our Academic Senate, who did another phenomenal job on our Flex Week. Um, it also uh, was a great opportunity to welcome our 27 new faculty, um, which, uh, yes, uh, um, they're a wonderful new uh, group. And uh, I was just talking to somebody today how we, in fact, it was Bob Cosgrove who uh, we noted that uh, they just seem so much younger uh, than, <laughs> than before. Class rather than standing in the <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's, we're very proud of them. It's a very wonderful group. And if you came to the event, uh, you saw some of the statistics, uh, which we're very proud of. Um, also, um, wanted to uh, thank the trustees who were able to make it out to our various events uh, throughout the week. It's always uh, very special and important for you to be there, so we appreciate that. Um, at that time, I uh, delivered the first hot off the press annual state of the college. Uh, you did receive it in your in mail. Um, and then we will be having the community annual state of the college, which is uh, given every year um, in uh, on October 11th. Uh, October 29th is our homecoming. So hopefully you put that on your on your calendar. To, uh, you'll hear more about that as that uh, that gets closer. Um, so with that, um, oh, the first start of classes was just last week, as you know. Um, it's uh, no surprise. Uh, we've uh, done a great job, our Vice President of Instruction, our deans, and our faculty of trying to accommodate as many students as possible under with no, as you know, growth. And uh, they have done another good year. So I think we're very proud that we're one of the only districts and colleges, our two colleges, uh, that are able to uh, meet the demands of our students the same as the fall last year. So I think we should all be very proud about that. 
I'm also very proud that uh, with no time to spare, we were able to open the Learning Resource Center uh, on time. And uh, as you heard, uh, still a lot of bugs to work out, but at least it got open. Thank you. Okay. Vice Chancellor of Technology Services, Barbara Michi. No report this evening. Would you just like to maybe share for the general public uh, the award we received nationally? Sherpa? Yes, out of I think over 300 nationwide uh, entrants, Campus Technology Magazine uh, chose 10 uh, national leaders in education and uh, South Orange County Community College District uh, proudly joined um, Duke University of Maine, uh, Purdue, uh, and several others in that. So That's uh, astounding. Congratulations. Vice Chancellor of uh, Human Resources, David Bugay. No report. And Vice Chancellor Deborah Fitzsimmons. Um, I do have a written report, but I just wanted to highlight two things. One is that Fiscal Service had a very successful year-end closing, and they have completed their year-end closing in record time and was recognized by the Orange County Department of Education as the first large district to get their books closed. So they're going to receive a certificate of achievement and a pizza party for all the staff who helped with that. And again, that's just another example of how well Kim McCord, Carol Hilton, and David Kovacic Kachian work together <laughs> in a very positive and collaborative way, and um, it really is another fun example of that. You know, besides the budget, it's all year round and in various um, issues, and we resolve things together. I also wanted to point out something I attached to the written report, and that is the sound fiscal management checklist. And if you take a look at it, um, there. We, we always are monitoring the fiscal health of the district, but this provides one tool that the State Chancellor's Office has, and we've never really presented this to the board before, but it's 15 um, items that are part of behind is attachment under my board report. And basically, it's a self-assessment checklist for the year ending June of 2012, and the district is currently deemed acceptable in all 15 areas. And I have to say, um, with the state situation and state budget situation across um, community college system right now, um, I can expect that um, there's probably a large amount of community college districts that cannot say the same thing. So it's something that we cu currently monitor, and it's just one tool that we use. And I thought it would be interesting to the for the for the board to have this information. Okay, thank you. And I see we have no one from our IBC Classified Senate or our CSEA, so we'll move to Saddleback's Classified Senate President Don Minnie. Thank you. Um, congratulations to all our presenters. They did an excellent job tonight. And as we welcome the students to the new semester, we're also welcoming the new, uh, well, they said 12 classified employees, but they're actually replacement positions. These are positions that actually were just replacement positions. So we don't have uh, new positions yet. As you can see, some of the classified items in the board are actually management items. Um, but thank you for all the to the people that attended our classified um, breakfast. And uh, I know it's a very busy week for all of us. Mm -hmm. And also in, in service, of course, we uh, attempt to go to a lot of the workshops and learn new things. But of course, we're quite busy working with all the students that need our assistance. Not everything can be done online or even make a pathway of doing everything online. And we kind of disenfranchise some students when we do everything online. Um, but congratulations to the classified staff, especially of district services, that have uh, done a great job, and the county has recognized that. So we thank you as our leaders this year, and we're looking forward to another successful year. Okay, thank you. And we have someone here from uh, ASG at Saddleback College. Introduce yourself, please. Thank you. My name is Chelsea Goosens. I'm going to be filling in for Eric Bremen this semester. Unfortunately, he has a class during this oh, time. Oh, so okay. He's, he's done. A little upset about it, but I'll be here for him. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, on August 17th, we held our welcomer sheet for all our new members for the fall. We reviewed our parliamentary procedures, our constitution and bylaws, and participated in a number of team building activities and games. So we're really looking forward to the team that we've developed this year and moving forward with them. And on that note, we'd like to invite you to our blood drive that we're hosting on September 25th and 26th. Okay, thank you. And we have uh, from our... IVC ASG President Thomas. Again, thank you everyone. And I just want to report some of the stuff that we did last two weeks ago. We, as the student trustee, had a park mansion. We had a guest speaker, Mr. Bruce, come in and talk about parliamentary, parliamentary procedure, Brown Act, Constitution, how each student government 
members has to do the responsibility duties and some training session and and then we had a really successful welcome week last week we have some dj music live band hot dogs pizzas and popsicles and some snacks <laughs> so it Sounds actually good. foods ran out really quick just like in an hour or so <laughs> done <laughs> yeah and we have a lot of new applicants applying for ASIBC since we did a welcome week with food attraction so a lot of students know more about us now on campus and then I think ASIBC is looking for a really interesting academic year working with all the staff faculties on campus I really received a lot of emails from some staff and faculties asking to join the committees and helping out the school I'll just say again thank you everyone and that's it. Okay, thank you. And we have no one from our POA tonight, so this will conclude our meeting. Thank you, everyone. Okay. <laughs>